Okay, I think we're ready. Good morning. Welcome back to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I'm the host of this nonsense that I lovingly call the Garden of Voodoo or the Voodoo Garden. I have some things to show you today and, and if I do this right, I'm going to educate you without boring you stiff. Um, when you, when you grow indoors, the main thing that we're concerned about is light, getting enough light for our plants. Outdoors, not a problem. We can decide where we plant things. The sun does all the, all the work for us. Doesn't cost us a dime to plant out, outside. Indoors is a whole different matter. We do not have the advantage of nature's humidity, nature's light, nature's insects, nature's soil. We don't have any of those benefits. So we have to make it as best as we can with what we have to work with. Now what we have to work with is getting better every day. I want to show you something. This standard light bulb, the old Edison light bulb. This is where it all began. This is a 100 watt bulb. I'm going to start with 100 watts because that's what everything around here bases itself on. This is a 100 watt bulb and I'm going to educate you on this so that you'll know exactly what you're going to be looking for if you want to do your indoor gardening and it's not going to be confusing, okay? I don't like things that are confusing. My brain gets hurt whenever I get confused. This is a 100 light, uh, watt light bulb. You screw it in, you get a bright light. That's how it works. Simple, easy peasy. Now, this is how it's always been. Whenever uh, power goes into a light bulb, it has to do one of two things. There is no, there is no third option. One it can put out light. Two, it can put out heat. Generally, there's a combination of those, okay? How much light it puts out and how much heat it puts out, that's the balancing, okay, that goes on with these lights. The, uh, some of them will put out more heat and less light. Some will put out more light and less heat. Now, the old-fashioned ones, this put out 100 watts. That's a measure of power. 100 watts is what this used, and it put out a certain amount of light. Okay, and it was not very efficient at all. Back in the day, us old folks, you remember, you touch a light bulb when it was on and you would scald your finger. You could darn near hear that finger sizzling. That was not an efficient uh, way to produce light, but that's all we had. Then came along, and I'm only gonna go with fluorescent. I'm not gonna go with mercury, halide, sodium, vapor. Those are uh, off into another category that I don't even use, so I'm not even gonna talk about those. The main thing that we came along with was uh, fluorescent bulbs. Usually it was those long tubes that are in stores in the ceilings. You see the long tubes? What those are is nothing more than a hollow tube filled with a particular type of gas. There's a, 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 di a, a, a metal thing on each side, um, an a, a element. Here I go. <laughs> and what it does is it sends an electrical charge into the gas, lights up the gas, fluorescence. That's why they're called fluorescent lights. There's actually no electricity really going through. It's just the gas is lit up from the electricity. And um, those were all well and good. Well, then they came out with compact fluorescence for those of us at home that didn't have room for these, you know, 10 foot li uh, light tubes. And these screw into our regular light sockets. This one here uses, I think, about 20 watts of power. Yet it puts out the light equivalent of this 100 watt bulb. So it's just like running one of these as a 20 watt bulb. If you had a 20 watt bulb, you'd hardly even see the light. Okay, that's for a little desk lamp. But you put 20 watts into this and you get the same amount of light that you get out of here. And what's happening is it's not putting out nearly the amount of heat and it's using a whole different process. Whereas this uses a little element inside, a little piece of wire that gets blindingly bright and hot from electricity running through it. This one uses the concept of the tubes. It puts out electricity that lights up all of this gas inside of here and it makes light. You know, when you turn them off, you see a little gr green glow. That's the residual glow of the phosphorescence of this. Now, these were wonderful. They helped us save a lot of energy and got us weaned off of using a lot of energy here. Our electric bills went down. Now, with everything that I, I, I see in nature and in real life, uh, well, not, uh, not that nature is in real life, but uh, outside of the garden, everything that I see has a balance going on with it. You don't get something for nothing. This is a wonder product. It was a great thing for its day. The downside is the, this contains mercury. Mercury is deadly, okay? 
and uh, you don't want mercury in your system. So if you break one of these bulbs, you got to run for your life. You don't want to be inhaling the gas that comes out of these. So don't go breaking your fluorescent light bulbs on purpose. Same thing with those long tubes. It's a deadly gas that comes out of there and it could harm you, even kill you. So be very careful. And that's why many states, if not all the states, have laws on how to get rid of these. You can't just throw them in your trash legally. You have to take them to a recycler where they do it with the proper procedure so that this doesn't go out into the environment and kill all of God's creatures. Now, fluorescent bulbs are really great. They started out small. This one's a 100 watt. Um, equivalent, but it uses a lot less energy. And I had these all over my house for the longest time. Well, they're great for in the house, but growing, not so much. They really don't put out the strength of light that you need to grow plants that require a lot of light. Some of these plants won't, won't grow at all underneath that. They'll grow spindly and stuff. That's what you get when you don't give them enough light. Well, man in his infinite wisdom and women, <laughs> people, came out with this. The Mondo light. Yes, this is a compact fluorescent as well, only it's just bigger. That's what people think. Well, bigger is better. Well, it was better for growing plants. And this one uses uh, the, the same wattage as this. This is 105 watts of power that this uses. This is 100 watts. So give or take a few watts. It uses the same amount of power, yet this will put out the light equivalent of five of these. And uh, putting five of these in a room isn't going to make it brighter, it's just going to make more light. But what this does is instead of putting out a whole bunch of light at that wattage, it boosts the light and makes it brighter. So this will put out the brightness equivalent of those being chained together and getting ex exponentially brighter. You just screw it into there and it's like running a 100 watt light. This is what I chose to run my voodoo garden with. It seemed to do perfectly. And it did for the longest time, many, many years. I've been using these things for the longest time. They're wonderful. They're economic. They only cost $20 a bulb. That seems like a lot, but they last for, uh, some of these I've had for five, six years, and they're just perfectly fine. Problem is, of course, these have mercury in them. So if you break these, you're in for a lot of trouble. So you don't want to break these. You want to be gentle with these things. They generate just a little bit of heat, but not too awful much to worry about. You can use these in regular light fixtures. That's what I have around here. Now, humans in their infinite wisdom have come out with something even better. You know, I'm kind of lucky. I'm living long enough to see all this technology come out. And you know me, I, I love, I love experimenting. I loved checking things out or doing my mad science stuff. I'm not so much into mainstream science because it has rules, it has guidelines. I like to call mine mad science because I like to think that I can go outside the rules and do something a little bit different that people haven't done before. Now this is something that I started reading about online and uh, this uses LEDs. I'm going to give you a close-up of this, but I want to explain something really quick first. It won't take very long. LED. Uh, light emitting diode. And what that is, is this little tiny yellow thing. They started out with flashlights, with the LEDs. They got rid of regular light bulbs and they put in these little tiny yellow squares and you turn it on, it blinds you. Really bright light, uses hardly any power, doesn't put out hardly any heat whatsoever. It's a miracle product. You know, it's the, the, new, the latest, greatest thing coming out in, in light sources. Well, that was great for a flashlight, but w what use did we have for it anywhere else? Uh, it wasn't cheap enough. See, new technology is always expensive. And this was very expensive when it came out. LEDs cost a fortune. And people kept asking me, Ray, when are you going to change the Voodoo Garden over to LEDs? Well, I didn't want to do that because the cost factor. The same amount of light that I would get off of an LED would cost me a fortune compared to these. I can get like 10 of these for the price of one LED. Yeah, I just couldn't see uh, spending that kind of money. Well, when they start mass producing these things, and generally mass production comes from overseas because I don't know why, I'm not going to go into the politics of it, but in the United States, they really didn't work hard to get the price down and the manufacturing in bulk. And this happened in China, Malaysia, Taiwan, Indonesia, all those countries where they mass produce stuff a lot less expensive than here. And uh, so what I did was I waited until the price went down to where I felt comfortable with it and I ordered parts. You can buy an LED light fixture to replace these things and that's all well and good, but they're still a little bit more expensive 
than the compact fluorescence. So I'm really, I wasn't quite ready to go with it. So what I did was I broke out my Frankenstein hat and I did a little bit of an experiment. And here's the results of my experiment. Let me explain this, okay? This is not quite so complex as it looks. All I did was I bought a chip. See this yellow thing here? This yellow thing is covered up with a black holder to hold it down. But all it is, is, is it's about maybe two inches by two inches, and it's a chip. It's an LED chip. And if you touch the positive and the negative with 36 volts of power, it lights up. It runs off of 36 volts of power. And it is as bright as the sun itself. It's incredible. Now, something this bright, this, these are called super brights, not just a, an LED. It's called super bright LEDs. These put out so much light and uh, run so much power through such a small thing. They do generate heat. So what you need is what's called a heat sink. This is nothing more than aluminum fins that take the, the heat from the back of this chip and they spread it out all over the place so that air can run through here and cool them. Okay, so I have my positive, my negative, and that runs over to here. And this is not very complex. This is called a controller. And this controls the power to the chip. That's all this does, okay? It takes 110 volts from the house in these red wires, turns it into 36 volts, comes out this end, plugs into this disc, and it produces the power because this does not run off 110 volts like your regular house. So you have to cut it back down, cut it down to 36 volts. Not a problem. So I got this to run this. Now, this will heat up these fins. It has a built-in fan on the bottom. And that fan turns on and it blows air up through these fins from the bottom to the top and it cools these fins down to dissipate whatever heat this generates. Kind of neat. Now, this fan runs off of 12 volts of power, so I can't run it off of this 36 volt transformer. I had to buy another transformer and that's what this thing down here is. It's nothing more than a little box. It has electronics inside and you take your house voltage, you put it on to the line and the neutral. This is the power and the neutral. And then you take, the it turns it into 12 volts like a battery, positive and negative. Those come out and then go right into here. Yep, there's a little yellow wire that I snipped off. That is the speed control. You don't need speed control. You're running it at full speed. So now I have the power for this transformer for the disc and the power for this uh, fan all coming off of the same thing. And then the power that feeds it, I just took an old extension cord, bared the wires and hooked it on there and it's screwed on tight so there's no bare wires and it's not dangerous. And this plugs into the wall. Now, what I'm going to do <laughs> is, oh yeah, you know I'm going to blind you. Now, I'm going to have to close my eyes for this because there are some things you do not do. You do not spit in the wind. You do not look at the sun and you do not look at a bright LED directly. You can damage your eyes. It's not funny. It's not a joke. I don't mess around with my eyes because I need them. And I'm being stern here because I don't want anybody thinking this is funny. All right. So when I did this, I put on two pairs of sunglasses and I looked a little bit off to the side and I made sure I didn't look at this. Now this probably won't do anything to my lens because it's going straight up, but I want you to see what happens when I plug this in, okay? Brace yourself, it's gonna get bright. Okay. That is incredible, isn't it? Yes it is. Now I'm gonna aim this away from you so that you don't have to get blinded. This is 10,000 lumens of light. Lumens is what the uh, measurement is of visible light coming out of a source, okay? So uh, the lumens for, let me bring this over. The lumens for the light bulb that I used to use, and that's this one. Uh, this uses 100 watts of power. The lumens were 7,000 lumens, between seven and 8,000, okay? Now this is a 100 watt LED. 
and it puts out 10,000 lumens, but it only uses a small amount of power to put out those lumens, less than the compact fluorescent. And the, the power runs this fan, you can feel a little bit of a breeze, and what I did was, let me turn this off, okay, so I can set it down and not, <laughs> and not lose my eyesight. Ah, much better. <laughs> now, all I did was, uh, I ordered this kit, and it came with this chip, it came with a bracket, it came with the heat sink, the fan, and uh, it came with a controller to run it. They all came together, and it cost me like 20 something dollars. And that is what I paid like 20 something dollars for this light bulb. So I'm paying 20 something dollars for this, and then I had to pay eight dollars for this thing right here. So it's a $28 investment. This is a piece of tin that I had left over from putting in my uh, ductwork uh, in the basement. And what I did was I used uh, JB Weld, which is this stuff that you mix together and it hardens as hard as concrete. I glued this onto the top of this. This has holes and it draws the air from underneath, which brings it in here and then cools everything down all at once. And then I glued it onto this. I drilled two holes. And then what I do is I mount this on the ceiling and then I run this cord to the nearest outlet. Now this will supply crazy amounts of light. And uh, I want to show you a demonstration, okay? I'm going to show you something that uh, I think is really kind of cute. Cute little toy, isn't it? I got this online. Uh, it's an airplane. Yeah, it's an airplane. I don't have the, uh, the complete part. There's a post that I don't ha I'm not holding right now, but the post sits on your desk. And then uh, this little uh, screw right here sits on top of the post in a little indent and it has counterweights, so it's perfectly balanced. What you're supposed to do, see it's a solar toy, and what you do is you place this in a sunny window and the propeller will move and it'll take this plane and take it around in circles. Yeah, it's a really an adorable little toy. Yeah, I thought it would make a, a fun little addition to the voodoo garden. I thought, well, I got lights in here. I can run it in here. Well, this is what happened, or rather didn't happen. See? Even underneath the brightest fluorescent bulb I have, nothing. I couldn't get it to do anything. And that really kind of bummed me out. I mean, it's not that I had an expensive toy, but I thought it would be a fun thing to, to do in here. Well, I'm going to walk you over. And this bulb here, the toy, I mounted on the ceiling. And this is for the banana's benefit. And what I did was, see, that light is bright enough to get this airplane going. That shows me that this light far outstrips the lights that I use in, the, in intensity of light. That's incredible, but I have to make sure I don't look up. That's the downside to this, is I cannot look directly at this LED while it's on, as opposed to my other light bulbs. The other light bulbs are kind of bright, and, you know, it doesn't really help your eyes to stare right at them. The LED is quite bright. Okay, now that we're done showing off this contraption of a light, I'm going to unplug it, because I don't need this thing burning out my retinas right now. I wanted to show you that light bulb, because it was an experiment of mine. I wanted to find out if... I could uh, make my own light fixture for the same price as the fluorescent, and it turns out I could. So uh, thinking outside the box, I made my own light fixture. It plugs in up there. Now, of course, that's all temporary because I'm going to be changing the wiring in the Voodoo Garden, and this, let me wipe this off, this is why. This is what I've been researching for quite a while. And I wanted to show it to you because they just came in and I'm incredibly excited about these things. Technology just keeps moving. You can't stop it. Now, when I'm talking about LED lights, I wanted to see if I could do it. And I did it. That was just an experiment of mine. I may use that. I may not. But if I do use it, I'm going to run an outlet up there and plug it directly into the outlet instead of that screw in thing. Now, uh, I looked online and the same place where I got my light bulbs here, they have a new new device. And this is LED. It looks like an old shop light. I mean, the old fashioned shop light, doesn't it? No. This has a strip of LED 
uh, diodes all the way, uh, those, those little yellow squares, smaller than that, but a whole bunch of them right along down the line. Now I check this out. This only uses the same amount of light. Actually, it uses 80 watts of power. Okay, 80 watts of power. It uses 20 watts less than this, 25 watts less than this. Yet this is a 10,000 lumen just like that. Now it's got the diffuser here, so it's not like in your eyes and you don't lose your sight. It's got a nice pull chain. It comes with uh, little hooks on top that are very sturdy so you can hang it and it comes with a chain so that you can adjust it to any height that you want. Now what's, what I really like about these is they don't have a cord on them. What they have is this. I want to show you up close. Instead of a cord, it has this triangular shape. It looks like Mickey Mouse, doesn't it? It's got three little prongs. It's got one on that side and it's got one on this side. And I'll tell you the reason. Actually, I'm going to show you the reason. This cord that just happens to be here. <laughs> See how I set up the stage? I plugged it in over at the wall. Now all you have to do is plug this into the end of your light. And then you hang the light and you pull the chain. Beautiful, isn't it? Bright, yes. Definitely nice and bright. What I like about these is they don't unlike these bulbs that put out light in the in a certain spot and you got to move your plants this is a long bar of light and you can place your plants anywhere you want and the light goes down like that so the higher it is the more coverage you get the lower it is the more intensity you're going to get so you can pick and choose how you want to do it and you plug the cord into this it lights it up. It comes equipped with a regular cord that plugs into the wall. It also comes with a cord with a, with a three, uh, the Mickey Mouse thing on one end and the Mickey Mouse thing on the other. So you can plug it in over there and plug it into the next light. So each light does not have to be plugged into an outlet. You plug one into an outlet, you hang it, you plug the, the extender cord into that, into the next one, the next one, and I can run these all over without having to do all kinds of outlets. So it was perfect for, for my needs, and I really like that, and I like the brightness of this. You know what? I'm wondering if this will run this plane. Nope, not quite. It's just a little bit less lumens than the other one. It's 10,000. But what it has is it has this diffuser thing on it. And I think if I took the diffuser thing off, it would run the airplane. It would be bright enough. But I don't want to do that. I like the diffuser because it's, it's easier on my eyes. And um, these things, of course, are not going to be as inexpensive as uh, what I, I call this my Frankenstein invention for lights. This one costs $69.99. Not inexpensive. It definitely costs more than this. But, but... I did some calculations and I did real life calculations. I wanted to do this for myself, but I also wanted to do this for you so that I can show you, actually demonstrate to you how these things are more economical and a smarter choice. First of all, no mercury. Better for the environment already. There we go. Uh, second of all, if I were to run this room, and I, I figured out each one of these bulbs here is the equivalent of five incandescents, okay? We'll start with the incandescents. If I changed all of these bulbs to incandescents, I would have to run so many of these things, it would be insane. The whole ceiling would look like Las Vegas, and it would cost me $2,189 in yearly electricity just to run this room. I turn it on at 6 a.m., I turn it off at 6 p.m., 12 hours on, 12 hours off. That's what these plants get in the way of light. It's a nice even thing. And uh, the, so I run it uh, 12 on, 12 off. $2,189 if you go the way of the old school uh, incandescent. Now, if you go with these, you're going to save a lot, of energy, uh, a lot of energy. Compact fluorescent will cost me $503 to run for all of these bulbs in this room. I run nine bulbs. So with nine bulbs running, it will cost me $503 per year in electricity. That may seem like quite a bit, but then again, the Voodoo Garden earns me a few dollars because people tune in. And uh, But anyway, yeah, even so, it costs like $41.99 a day to run these things. No, a day? No, per month, sorry. 
per month. I think that's what it was per month to run this uh, Voodoo Guard. That's really not quite uh, not that much now. If I take it down to the LED, they use even less power than the compact fluorescence. That's a, a win situation for me. So if I change all these lights over and use this, I get the same amount of coverage, yet these use less power. This one uses 80 watts, like I told you, and it covers more space than this one that uses 105. I would only spend, if I used five of these, I have five of these, by the way. I ordered five, I received five. If I run those five, all over this room, I'm going to get the, uh, more coverage than I will with these bulbs. I'm going to spend $191 a year. And that is so much savings over the $503 that I'm spending on compact fluorescent. So I calculated it out, me and my little Frankenstein brain of mine, in 15 months, these will pay for themselves. And then I'm running free. Well, not really free, but basically they paid for themselves. It's a wonderful thing. So uh, I'm definitely going with LED. And if you want to try LED, I definitely recommend starting out small and then working your way up. Find something that you're comfortable with. I'm not a spokesman for these lights, nor am I a spokesman for the company that sells them. Now, the company that sells them is called 1000bulbs.com. I've been using this company. They give me no breaks. No breaks, no discounts, no nothing. I even asked them once if they would offer coupons so that you know customers could come in and get a, a bit of a break. No, they don't do that. And I, I, at first I was kind of a little bit miffed and then I thought about it logically. I thought, no, that's a good thing. They cannot be persuaded to uh, alter their uh, sales depending on who's got money and who doesn't. That's a good thing. So I got no breaks on this. I am not making a dime off of them. I ordered, paid full price for these. And, uh, but I have to say something. I've been using their bulbs ever since way back in the early days when I first started. Their shipping is quick. If you get a defective item, they replace it. They're very good about this. And people, those of you who know that I've recommended these bulbs, sometimes you get a defective bulb. It's hard to ship compact fluorescents because they're so damned, oh, sorry, so darned delicate. Pardon me, I didn't mean to say that. But they are so darn delicate. And uh, they sometimes come broken. This one is packed really well. You know what they do? They send it in, a, in an inner box, cardboard box, and I can shred that box up and throw it in my compost pile. But inside the box are those packing peanuts, you know, those the, the bane of existence. I hate those things. But those are the cornstarch peanuts. So all I have to do is put them into a tub of water, they dissolve and I pour it out on the ground and it's perfectly good for the environment. It's wonderful. And uh, so I got to say, even though I'm not their spokesman, uh, I don't have any affiliation with them, I do recommend them as a source for your bulbs. They're trustworthy. They're a good solid company. They have a good solid product. I researched this one and they have it for the lowest price, $69.99. It's not cheap, but then again, if you go cheap, the cheap comes out expensive eventually. And uh, I feel good about switching over to these. It's an investment. It's an investment that I'm really happy to make. So that's what I wanted to show you. Uh, I wanted to make, uh, what I did today was I filmed a few episodes in advance. So I have a few programs that I filmed and I'm releasing them one at a time as the, the time slots allow. And this is going to give me time off from filming every single week or every two weeks because I need to r literally take this apart and install these. So the next episode you see, I should have these lights up and running and you can see what it looks like in the Voodoo Garden. Anyway, that was my thing, showing you the lighting. If you have any questions concerning your lighting or any kind of ideas that you have for your lighting, post it in the comment section below. I'm here. I'm here for you and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So post it in the comment section below. Otherwise, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the lights that I have going on here. By the way, ooh, ooh, one last thing. One last thing and then I'll let you go, okay? Uh, the, the color of the light. This is one thing that I know people are going to ask about. The color of the light in Kelvin, all right? One end of the spectrum, you have the yellowish, comfortable looking light. Uh, uh, that's uh, the kind that we normally see in our house, in the lamps. That's low Kelvin in the like the 2000 range. Upwards, all the way up to stark daylight, that's five to 6,000 Kelvin, all right? These are 5,000 Kelvin. That's why it looks so bleak, like fluorescent lighting, you know, that everybody looks like crap in fluorescent lighting. That's why they don't have them in clubs. <laughs> but this, is also, I think this is a 4,000 Kelvin, just a little bit more comfortable than the ones I have here. Uh, the, the thing about Kelvins is uh, folks uh, claim that lower Kelvin, the lower number in Kelvin, even though it's just as bright, 
promotes flowering, whereas the higher Kelvin promotes green growth. Now, I've been using the high Kelvin for years. I don't go with this low Kelvin, high Kelvin. I've been, gro I've been growing plants in the Voodoo Garden for so many years I can't even remember. I don't have a problem with flowering. These, these plants definitely flower. The one behind me, it's flowering. I have plants that flower. Tomatoes, peppers, all kinds of weird stuff. Not a problem. So I don't go with the Kelvin thing. Some people are purists. They swear by it. I'm not going to badmouth that. I'm just saying this is what I do. So that was one last thing about these. These are, I think, four to 5,000 Kelvin, and it suits my plants just fine. And I think the brightness is going to suit them fine. Anyway, that's what I got for you today. Thank you for joining me in the Voodoo Garden. If you, Like I said, any questions, post it down there. If not, me and my bulbs, <laughs> we are out of here. Actually, they are definitely out of here. It's time to leap into the present, Ray. Uh, one more time. One more time. Oh, it's just so freaking bright.